Welcome to Turn the Page, the official podcast of the Syosset Public Library. Welcome to Syosset Library's Turn the Page podcast. This is Jessica. I am your host, and I'm really excited to have someone here today who is one of our young Syosset uh, residents who has written a book. Um, please introduce yourself and tell us about research to empower. Hi, everyone. I'm really excited to be here today. My name is Grace Liu. I am a sophomore at Syosset High School, and I've lived in Syosset, grown up in Syosset. And I recently published a book titled Research to Empower, a vibrant guidebook for young students. It's published by Post Hill Press. And essentially what I tried to do in my book is to give students tools um, that can allow them to learn how to do research in a fun and engaging way so that research is presented in a way that isn't super mysterious or difficult. So how did this idea come to you um, to to publish a book like this, to, to write a book like this? And uh, when did the seed sort of start in your in your mind that uh, you saw this need and you were going to write about it? Of course, I was inspired to write this because of my own research journey. As a student researcher, when I started to do research a few years ago, I spent many, many sleepless nights just trying to find a good program or a good website with that had the proper resources to do research uh, to do research. And I was shocked to find that most research programs are either only available to high schoolers, and I was in middle school at the time, so there was like an age limit. And then also, in addition to that, most programs also charge thousands, even tens of thousands of US dollars just for maybe a week or two or of learning how to do research. And my family couldn't afford to send me to those programs. And so later on, I was really blessed to be selected to be a part of a free research program. And that led me to learn how to do research and then eventually publish my research in peer-reviewed journals. And I just felt that research completely changed my life and it helped me discover my passion. And it equipped me with so many essential skills like critical thinking, learning how to communicate and manage such a large project like writing a full-length research paper. And reflecting on that experience made me realize how much it is how it's so necessary to have a guidebook like this that is comprehensive and can really help students like I did um, that are looking to jumpstart their research journeys. So that's all very interesting. And I remember, you know, when I was looking through uh, your book, just that what you had just said about the cost of like research mentorships. Um, And one thing as a librarian that I always sort of take note of is that, uh, you know, everybody's always talking about how important it is to find peer reviewed um, notable sources when you're doing research, how to make sure that what you are using for your sources are actually valid. And uh, I, I think a thing that struck me and it also, you know, just like when you were just talking about it is that if you only start teaching these skills when somebody is at a much higher grade level, they, you know, they're not necessarily going to have the building blocks to get there. They might not necessarily understand that this is not a new concept, that this is how it really should Mm -hmm. be and how it should always be. So um, do you want to talk a little bit about just sort of how you um, set the book up from beginning to end, and I guess how you researched doing research and presented it for this young audience. Yeah, of course. In terms of, I guess, since this question is more asking about how I approached writing my book, 
And so it was, yes, I had to do a lot of research. I would say it in total probably was like a three year process, including doing the initial research, doing the planning, since I had to look at what already existed. There are many how to research books already, but I found that there's like a gap in the market where there isn't a research book that is written from a student's perspective and from a perspective that wants to make research something that's really fun and engaging. Right now, research is the widespread view of research is that it's either super boring, it's super difficult, and only a select demographic can access these resources and get their work published. And so when I realized this, of course, I took a lot of the tips and kind of how to do research books and kept that in my notes when I was writing the book, because a lot of the processes, the way that they wrote the book, it was very useful to me and it's kind of like reviewing the literature in um, a research project you want to see what's already out there and then see how your work fits into what's already out there so instead of um, in, instead of approaching it from from a perspective of of like this is what you need to do step one and you have to like read five books or whatever um, I I, I approached it more, I, I framed it in a way so that research is a game. Like that is the whole premise of my book. I structure it into three main parts and it's 14 chapters and the three parts are split into um, the first part, like let the games begin. So introduction to research, why it's so important. And then the second part is like game in progress. So it's really getting down into the nitty gritty. Um, I frame it like choosing a research methodology is kind of like choosing your weapon, quote unquote, um, in like a game, for example. And then part three is leveling up. So it's learning how to disseminate and share your research and then unlocking like a massive, quote unquote, treasure chest of resources that is like a list of programs um, for students to learn how to uh, do research with, which they can explore. So that's how I organized the book. And it the reason why I organized my book is this way is because of the research that I did while I was writing the book. So a few things also, um, you know, you tackle a few, I guess, hot button questions at the time, for instance, uh, really so many people are talking about using AI for research. Um, and that was one thing that obviously I think is going to come into play a lot in the future. And I suppose if you're looking at something from a game standpoint, um, it, it could be it's it's an interesting tool. But I, I like how you sort of um, answered that question. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Of course, I think AI, and I'm I'm so interested in this, by the way, that's why in my introduction of the book, I included like a little section on AI because, and that was during like one of the later edits of my book, because it, that was when AI started becoming like really, really popular. Things like ChatGPT, you just heard it everywhere. Everyone was talking about it. And so I felt that it was really relevant to research and what I was doing. And so I think that of course, it's it's already been transforming our lives. And AI, I know many, many people are, are scared of it, scared of using it and the potential risks that it has. And I think I tend to look on the bright side a bit more. Um, and I think of it as a tool that we can use to help us make things more efficient in the research process. So um and then a lot of people might look at that and probably wonder, well, well, why still do research if AI can just do it for you? You can ask ChatGPT a question, your research question, and then it can gather together whatever it's pulling up and it comes out with it in seconds. And I would say my argument is that, yes, AI has many benefits and brings a lot to the table, but doing research is still so, so important. And I would say AI can't replace that for you, not only because 
first of all, on an individual level, skills like critical thinking, problem solving, and in-depth thinking, these are irreplaceable and you can't have AI do that for you. No one can magically make you be able to do that. And so I, I would say that's the first thing. And second thing is AI, a lot of the times, as of now, if you ask ChatGPT to do something and then maybe like cite sources, I believe it's still not able to do that. In fact, I when I was doing like my own little like experiment um, the other day, I was just like entering like a prompt for ChatGPT and then it came out with a, a response and it said like a study by um, Stanford University's so-and-so center um, said so-and-so. And I looked up like this thing, this study that it referred to, and it didn't exist. So it was really, I, I was quite shocked that this actually happened. And I don't know if um, OpenAI has fixed this issue or not, because it can be really, it, it's misinformation, really. Um, and so I would say these risks like these, where you, if you blindly just follow the information that AI gives you and filters for you, it can kind of defeat the purpose of research because I think the beauty of doing research is doing that in-depth thinking and going so in-depth and in, in creating like new areas um, of information that no one has ever explored before. And AI right now, the responses that it generates is based on pre-existing information. And so that's why I think research is still so, so important. Yeah, thank you uh, for that, because that is um, something, you know, we we sort of keep our eye on that as well. And that is uh, something that we found as well, that sometimes when AI is unable to, uh, or I guess a lot, when it's un unable to um, really back up what it's saying, it just kind of pulls a response that doesn't really exist. And if you're not thinking critically, and you're just taking the, taking it at face value, it will impact a lot. Um, and so I, I think that you make a very good point there. So what are like, if you could pick out two or three of your favorite prompts that you put into the book to uh, cause that spark uh, for a young researcher, what would they be? The first thing I would do is to Definitely, I think the one of the most important things when starting to do research, starting a research journey is making it very, very clear why you were out to do it. And so an entire chapter of my book is it's um, the chapter second chapter is, is called like a love letter to research, where I literally write a love letter to research detailing why I wanted to do research and my story of why I wanted to do research. So in my case, I wanted to do research. My first research question was based on real life experiences that I had where I um, used to do fencing the sport and I loved it so much. And I wondered what is the role that it played for women's empowerment throughout history because sports can be so empowering and so it came from a an activity that I really love to do so that can be one thing is looking at the activities that you're currently involved in um, whether it's courses at school or uh, things outside of school it could be a sport like for me, um, and then looking at if there are particular issues that you feel that um, no one has really observed except for you, or if there are things that you've noticed maybe could be problematic that you want to make change on. So that could be a point of interest. That would be the first thing, um, is looking at the things that you currently feel that you are already really, really interested in, and then tying multiple of these interests together can make a really interesting research topic. And then I would say the second thing is going along the lines of what I just mentioned is identifying problems maybe within your community or in the world that you see that maybe it could personally affect you or it, you have seen it affect someone close to you. Um, for me, it was also my first research project related to fencing and women in fencing. I had experienced um, gender discrimination before and that's why I wanted to look at a lens of um, like women's studies and things like that so it could be it, it, these two kind of tie together I think 
the looking at for a problem in your community and then looking for like activities that you really care about it could already have an overlap but those are I think the two big places where you would be able to find something that you could a topic that you would be interested and passionate about in the long term that is also meaningful and impactful. So how did you go about uh, editing and publishing this book? Oh, that is a long story. And I always love um, sharing about this because it had its ups and downs. So when I had a basic first draft of my book manuscript, it and it looks like completely different. Like if I go back to the file, the word file, um, it looks completely different from what is actually published today. But um, I, I had to have like some kind of manuscript to when I was pitching myself to um, publishers. So I literally just looked online, whether it was on LinkedIn or Google or looking um, for other people who have published books, um, uh, other uh, teens like me who have published books like what publishers they had and then I made a huge list of those publishers and found their contact information and I literally just cold emailed them one by one by one and it took several days several weeks of waiting anxiously for a response most of them didn't reply to me um some people uh replied to me saying sorry we're not interested or sorry you have to have this so and so credentials to be able to publish with us and i was starting to get kind of um rejected i mean i i was rejected so many times so i was starting to feel that maybe this plan wouldn't work out. I, I did have a plan B, which is to just self-publish my book. Um, but I really, I felt that I worked on my project for so long and I had so many plans for it that I wanted to tr at least try and find like an actual publisher to help me with the book. And then right when I was feeling like at my lowest, um, one publisher reached out to me and said that they were interested in hopping on a Zoom call with me. And that day was so exciting for me. Um, and eventually they had the Zoom call with me. And then I think like one thing led to another. And um, that publisher is was the only publisher that had like a positive reply to me and is the publisher who published my book that is um, here today. So the whole process was very much about not giving up on my initial dream and Although I had a plan B, I always believed that I, the topic that I did, it was very, very important and had a huge market when I was emailing them. I tried to make, emphasize that how important my book is. Um, and then once I found a publisher, um, it just went a lot more smoothly then because they have their in-house editor and that really helped me with my, with improving my writing overall. Um, I feel like when they were like making the changes and then just going through the changes one by one it was really tedious at times but I think it was really enjoyable because I love receiving constructive criticism I think that visibly seeing the growth that you have on um, like just like marked out on a word document is really really satisfying so that is essentially my publishing journey once it was edited a few rounds of edits then they moved into like kind of like the marketing stage um, and then it was release date and um, now I'm I'm still kind of in like the promotion stage so um, that's kind of the like flow for the publication process. Thank you so much. Uh, this is a really fun interview. We love, love, love chatting with Syosset people about the cool things that they're doing and um, and uh, you have a bright future ahead of you. Thank you so much. <laughs> you're welcome. You're welcome. So you're going into your junior year as we speak. You're about to approach that. Yes. And I just wanted to quickly mention, I'm really, I, I was really excited to receive this like interview and speak on the podcast because growing up, since I've grown up in Syosset, like I mentioned in the beginning, um, I remember, especially when I was younger, literally Every single week, I think it, on a Saturday or a Sunday, I would go to the Syosset Public Library and we would bring this like huge bag. It's 
I would say it's like double the size of those like big tote bags. Um, it was kind of like a duffel bag. And then we would fill it up with books, my younger sister and I. Um, and sometimes my dad or my mom would um, borrow books. And at the end of the week, I would have like finished all the books that I have gotten. And just growing up, I loved reading so, so much. People called me like the little bookworm. And I still love reading to this day. And so being able to publish a book, it has been like one of my biggest dreams and being able to talk with like someone at Sayasa Public Library, um, the place where I grew up in is also really, really exciting me. So thank you again for this opportunity. Oh, no, you're welcome. And we love having our library users come back and chat with us about the amazing things that they're doing and sort of see uh, their own growth. And also just hearing that we had even a small part in that is wonderful. So thank you very much. Thank you. So once again, this was Jessica with Turn the Page Podcast. Our guest today was Grace Liu. And we are going to close this chapter. It's time to close this chapter of Turn the Page. Join us for the next episode.